So, Lauren, congratulations on season two. Um, now that it's finished, how, how do you feel? Um, is it just are you relaxed or are you excited for what's what's next? Um, Graham, I'm not sure the last time I actually relaxed at all. Um, it's what I will say is we premiered uh, the the first episode in mm -hmm. London last night. And it was such a joy to finally bring it to the screen. We started writing the show over two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. um, obviously the production schedule was, was shut down um, mm -hmm. and completely had to, had to be reformed because of COVID. Um, and I think for those of us that have been pouring our lives into it for, for this long, mm -hmm. I'm so thrilled that everyone finally gets to see it. It's been two years since, yeah. since we launched season one. Um, that being said, there is that relief and yet, you know, also yesterday I was working on writing season three. Yeah. So yeah. it is, it's kind of a nonstop whirlwind uh, mm -hmm. in the best possible way. All that means is that people care and they want to see more content. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, you, you've introduced so many new characters into this season. Um, was there any particular one that was a favorite that you were really excited to, you know, get into the show and see a, a live action interpretation of? Oh, absolutely. And, and, I think this season, probably more than ever, we introduce so many new characters. I've mm -hmm. talked a lot about Vesemir, probably mm -hmm. because he's the biggest character, you know, the most familiar to fans that we've introduced. And he has a huge role this season, not just as, you know, the the, the keeper of the witchers in Kaer Morhen and, and the father figure to Geralt and becoming kind of a, a mentor and grandfather figure to Ciri, mm -hmm. but he also is experiencing a journey of his own. And he's coming to terms with how the continent is changing and therefore the need for witchers is changing and he's watching mm. people come to, to he fears to an end um and that's a huge emotional journey for him mm. then there's really fun characters we get to meet too um we were so excited to introduce codringer and fen this season mm -hmm. i think most fans will know them uh from the time of contempt in their sort of famous scene with Geralt. we wanted to meet them a little bit earlier and set the stage for that and they are amazing and hilarious uh mm. I believe people will be begging for a Cod and Fen spinoff because you can watch them forever. Um, Nenica is a great addition to the season. Francesca, yeah, I could go on. We have yeah. a lot, a lot going this season. And you spoke there on Vesemir and how he feels about how the witchers are, you know, dying out. They're a dying breed. And there is a storyline in the series. I won't go too deep too into it. But there's also the fact that uh, and it involves a series. Is does that have a connection to your other series, Blood Origin? Uh, is that kind of, is there kind of a connection there that I could, I think you maybe understand what I'm getting at? Yes, and you were the first person to ask me that. Um, <laughs> what I will say without trying to give too much away mm. is yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I think so much of what we're tracking in the Witcher universe uh, period mm -hmm. is what's special about Siri. Um, why is she different? What are these powers that she has and where did they come from? And one of the mm -hmm. things that we explore in this season is, is the path of elder blood and sort of how it, how it went from Laradorn to Ciri. And in Blood Origin, we start to think, well, what happened before Laradorn? Um, and how do we start to, to unspool that mystery? Mm. And finally, you know, we're seeing Geralt now become a father figure, become a, uh, like, start to have a true family. Um, what was it like getting Henry to further explore that aspect of his character? Um, Henry was desperate to explore that part of his character. So it was a, it was a very easy conversation. Mm. In fact, we started talking between seasons. Henry, Henry really wanted to start to dig into the books a little bit more and get into what in the books is, is Geralt's internal dialogue. Um, he's very sort of vulnerable and open in his, in his head <laughs> to himself. Yeah. Um, and we talked a lot about how to get that on screen and the right way to represent that. And that aligned really well with the story that we wanted to tell, which is obviously what happens to a witcher when he's not alone anymore, when he actually has to care about someone more than himself and has to uh, has to find a way to make that person trust him. And to, to get someone to trust you, you have to open up, you have to be vulnerable. And I think Henry was just thrilled to be able to start putting more words in Geralt's mouth and to be <laughs> able to start you know, unpeeling those new layers. Mm. Uh, well, listen, Lauren, um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I can't wait for season three. I can't wait for Blood <laughs> Origins. I can't wait for whatever next you have for us. Uh, thank you so much. Graham, you are the type of fan we love. Uh, <laughs> I hope you were so happy with what you watch. Uh, it was absolutely brilliant, especially Reams. <laughs> but I already spoke on that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Lauren. Thank you.